Hello everyone, good day. Today we will be discussing about one more disease that is most commonly a viral in origin that is swine flu. The reason why we are discussing about swine flu is that after a rampant covid infection now the other uh, viral infection that is swine flu has started resurging among our population. Nowadays swine flu cases are in an increasing trend. So let's know more about swine flu. Swine flu is nothing but it is a variant of influenza A, influenza A virus. So influenza A virus is one of a type of a virus which causes normally flu infection that is common cold. It will be seen in almost each and every human being and also in other animals. So swine flu is nothing but it is a influenza virus which was derived from swine that is pigs. <coughs> Basically this influenza virus is initially hosted by pigs. It causes swine flu in pigs. So the swine flu once it usually was a zoonotic disease means the persons who are rearing with pigs or who are in close contact with pigs used to get this form of disease. So this is called a zoonotic disease, a disease that is trans being transferred from animals to humans. So in the initial days it was initially observed in pig rearers or cattle rearers. So the swine flu usually influenza as I told you earlier. So the dictum what we say is that H1N1. What does H1N1 mean? Any virus is decoded by its surface proteins. So as such swine flu virus that is the influenza virus that causes this particular infection has two characteristic uh, proteins. One is H1, H is hemagglutinin, hemagglutinin 1 and N is neuraminidase. These two proteins decide the virus addressability to the tissues. So swine flu is initially it's not a pure virus. It is a combination of four types of viruses. One is bird flu, second one is human influenza virus and the two variants of swine viruses. So all these viruses got mixed together and resultant the, the name came to be swine flu or H1N1 virus. The reason being it is more contaminant or it is easily communicable from one person to another person. The communicability of H1N1 or swine flu virus is about 95 percent. The first registered case was in Mexico. It was way back in 2018 April. WHO has regarded swine flu as pandemic after a rapid increase in cases on April 24th, 2018. It has led to many cases of severe pneumonia and multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. As the swine flu infection has been controlled, WHO has reclaimed that swine flu is no more pandemic in September 2018. So you can understand that swine flu has caused a pandemic similar to COVID infection. But swine flu has only lasted for around 6 to 8 months. Now it is type of common flu. So there is a phenomenon in is influenza viruses that is antigen shift and antigen drift. So these two uh, phenomena are mostly commonly found in influenza viruses. So what we see in usually the common cold, it varies, the strain varies from year to year. As such influenza viruses also differ. So swine flu is some has come to this form of modification. Any viral infection will always call initial symptoms of upper respiratory tract that includes severe cold or rhinitis, running nose, throat irritation, throat pain, fever, body pains, eye allergy symptoms including itching, eye redness, swelling of eyes. Other manifestations may include skin rashes, GI symptoms that is gastrointestinal symptoms including diarrhea or sometimes vomitings. In rare instances where the infection is very severe, patients may land in coma or even death may have occurred in some instances, especially in severe pneumonia leading to respiratory failure. So swine flu, there is no specific treatment when you come to any viral infection. 
but a group of drugs have been found to be effective in case of swine flu. The most common drug that we usually is fluvir or oseltamivir. It is also termed as tamiflu, oseltamivir. The other two drugs that are used along with oseltamivir are geminavir and permafinavir. So, it has been seen that in some cases oseltamivir has been found to be resistant but the other two drugs are not found to be have any resistance if used in frequent doses. The studies have shown that swine flu does not necessarily cause any abortions or abnormalities in growing fetuses. Even the treatment consisting of oseltamivir or janumvir or permanavir can be given in pregnant women. Preventive measures as we follow with any viral infection as we followed in our COVID infection are work, uh, work against swine flu infection also. That is good distance whenever a patient is having symptoms of swine flu that I told you earlier that is upper respiratory tract infections including cough, cold, running nose, eye itching all these symptoms if it is there it is better for the patient or the person to get isolated first one. Second one it is always safe to maintain a distance of 6 feet whenever you come across a symptomatic person. Third one is cough etiquette that is whenever a person coughs it is a mandatory to cough into a kerchief or by keeping your shoulder like this rather than coughing out outside and the resultant droplets will carry out the infection to some other person. And so and also once the symptoms started, it is already like the person will be symptomatic or infective within 3 to 5 days of infection. So, before the symptoms start, the person himself will be infective, but after the symptoms starts, usually the persons will be symptom infective for about 3 to 5 days. So, and also there is no role of antibiotics in the treatment of swine flu unless until there is a resultant secondary bacterial infection. If a pure case of swine flu, there is no role of any antibiotics. Good hydration, good diet, high protein diet, or plenty of bed rest and symptomatic treatment for cold and other allergies.